things. It, it really bothers me when people say, oh, man, we need to come up with rules that tell the DOD what to do about AI. I mean, they haven't been thinking about these things. They don't understand how important autonomous weapons can be. What are you talking about? The U.S. government's been deploying autonomous weapons like radar-seeking missiles and missiles that can differentiate between targets for decades now. Look at something like a C-RAM or a C-WIZ, the automated guns that are protecting our bases and our ships from incoming mortar fire, incoming artillery fire, incoming missile and rocket fire. Those are autonomous weapons. So your initial response to what we just heard Palmer Lucky talk about there, AI isn't really new. I mean, AI essentially, for the most part of the past few decades, has been an algorithm, heuristic code, which has been at the heart of many weapon systems. So help us understand this entire buzz around AI. Is it really what it's made out to be? Isn't AI the here and now and has been for a while? Yeah, it's a very important question, a very big question. And if I could redo it all again at Cornell, I'd probably ask that question and attempt to answer it within my doctoral dissertation. I think factually this is a correct statement that AI is not new, both theoretically but also in practice. So theoretically, the thought process surrounding the algorithms and their neurology, uh, essentially, that goes into building these systems to approximate human intelligence has been around for centuries, of course, right? And it is true that these systems, at least semi-autonomous systems that can operate to a degree on their own, whether it's flight, whether it's uh, producing targeting options for commanders, have been around uh, as well. And, and, and to a degree, there have been fully autonomous weapon systems, such as um, was stated, to include the CRAM, uh, a, a high powered machine gun that we would have put on our Ford operating bases in both Iraq and Afghanistan, where I deployed to autonomously, based upon certain criteria, engage incoming uh, enemy mortar, uh, missile fire, so on and so forth. Now, having said that, I think what we're seeing here is not just a change in kind for the emergence of AI within military circles and war fighting, but real paradigmatic shift in both the scale and scope of artificial intelligence to use for war making. In terms of the former, the scale, what we're seeing is the integration of AI across domain. And because I sit at the Army War College, I may use doctrinal terms that are lost on some. So I'll be very pedantic about explaining just what these terms and this means. And this means simply across air, land, sea, cyber, and space. And this scale, I think, is something different than what we've seen in the past. And the other consideration is the scope of the use, the punitive use, the expected use of AI going forward. No longer is AI going to be integrated at the tactical level of warfare, which is to say, battles between friendly and enemy forces, the use of a CRAM, as was just stated, to protect friendly forces in a stationary hardened base. But what we're attempting to do is literally scale up the use of AI for consequential matters at both the operational and strategic levels of war. And what that means is that we attempt to adopt artificial intelligence to generate different options that we would execute in terms of a campaign uh, that you synchronize military assets across time and space and force or unit to achieve certain political and military objectives. Because notwithstanding the emergence of AI, warfare ultimately is still about achieving political objectives by other means. And then finally, is the use of artificial intelligence at the strategic level of war, which is to say decision-making for the employment of forces across the globe. So given this notion of scale and scope, yes, AI has been around for literally centuries, theoretically, practically throughout different uh, contests the United States and others have engaged in. But what we're seeing here is something different in terms of the scope of use and the scale of use. 